A teenage girl wearing a hood enters a burger restaurant in the opening black and white scene. She places her order, and the cashier reacts startledly to her presence. Everyone in the restaurant is staring at the girl as soon as she enters. Why does the lady look like that? A boy in the room asks his mother. The boy's mother commands him to stop and eat the food because everyone is now looking at her. The girl has a noticeable burn on one side of her face, it is discovered. She shouts at them to look away and claims she didn't intend to gaze that way. A while back, we see a tormentor, Bradley, is checking a party invitation during his walk to the class. He then enters his class and starts harassing a South Asian lad in class by the name of Ravi relentlessly. The teacher then commands him to switch his place with Bernard, who is a friend of Bradley. Bernard then also harasses Ravi since he and Bradley belong to the same group of bullies. In another scenario, three females identified as Kelly, Bridget, and Heather approach Emily, a nerdy goth girl, as she stands by her locker and emotionally assault and tease her for sobbing. They ask her about the party invitation, which Bradley was looking at earlier, and inform her that we are invited to the party and you must also join. She declines by saying that I'm not invited and leaves. Later, Jack and Dane, two teen geek boys, are setting up bear traps in a field. An ex-army soldier, Parker, who lives nearby that field, starts introducing himself to Dane and asks him about the bear traps. At the lunch table, the harassed pupils are all seated calmly and discuss about the party. We get the idea that this group is planning to put an end to their bullying in the party. Suddenly, one of the bullies throws his milk carton upon one of the bullied student's books. He comes up to him and returns his milk box. Curtis, a different youngster who is friends with both the popular group and the outcasts, approaches the crowd and invites them to one of his Friday video sessions. In their conversations, the misfits express their admiration for him and warn one another to take precautions to prevent Curtis from attending the party. Bradley and Tommy damage Ravi's camera during the video session when they both confront him and Dane in the boys' room. Dane is bullied, according to Bradley, since he does nothing to stop it. Curtis is then informed of what transpired by Ravi, and he advises Bradley to leave Parker. Indignant with Curtis' conceited attitude, the belligerent Bradley declines and engages in combat. The next scenario depicts what happens at home. While his ignorant and illiterate parents argue downstairs, Dane talks to himself in his bedroom and puts a revolver at his own head. In another scene, Ravi is at home with his silent and emotionally barren Indian family. It is a depressingly quiet life where nobody interacts with one another, not even the housekeeper. Emily's mother is a cunning divorcee who doesn't give her any attention. Talented banjo musician Jack has a divorced mechanic father who always ignores him. Before leaving his house, Jack discusses his plans with his father, a mechanic who is working on his car. He informs him that he will probably be upset about it in a letter that he has written. As Jack leaves, the father clearly ignores him and keeps working. They utilize a hidden camera to fit in at the party house. The outcasts are taunting their tormentors as they converse about hell over a fire. We get the idea that this outcast group is behind those party invitations and are going to take revenge from those bullies tonight. They don costumes and carry out God's will. On their way to a party at night, Bradley and two other people are stopped by the police and found to be smoking marijuana. After having practically all of their marijuana seized, they are released. The party begins and everyone is enjoying the night to their extreme. Then they add chloroform to a punch bowl in order to begin with their plan, which makes everyone pass out. The five outcasts are all wearing masks and outfits from horror films, killer clowns from outer space, the strangers, my bloody valentine, the mummy, etc., and the partygoers are chained up together. Later, a boombox starts making a loud noise that wakes up the partygoers. They wish to torture their fiercest foes as retaliation for the years of suffering. Miles, a crude adolescent, assumes that everything is a bad Halloween prank and starts to yell. Jack then uses a livestock pistol to severely hurt him and disfigure his face and knee as a result. One of the boys, Tommy, is permitted to leave and seek assistance, but his attempt to flee is thwarted when he slips into a bear trap in the woods and is captured by a group of three boys riding dirt motorcycles known as the triplets, who assist the misfits. Tommy is brought back home and placed in the same room as the hurt Miles. The group is then tormented by another person, a popular jock by the name of Bernard, who blatantly insults them and clearly is a sociopath who dares them to kill him. 
Robbie tortures Bernard by stabbing him with a knife in the shoulder and then pouring a liquid drug down his throat to attack his muscles and prevent him from moving or communicating. Then Emily stabs him in the face and neck with hot-tipped needles to torture him. Curtis, who did, after all, attend the party, is covertly given a key by Ravi and manages to escape. Dane then stabs Ravi, killing him almost immediately for betraying the group. The next victim is Heather, who is bound to a chair and given a paste that slowly starts destroying the flesh it touches while leaving Heather with horrific scarring. At this point, Bridget recognizes Emily and apologizes. Bridget rejects Emily's promise to spare her by chopping off Bradley's fingers. After that, Emily offers Bradley safety in exchange for chopping off Bridget's fingers. Before Emily presents Bridget with the agreement once more, Bradley amputates two fingers from her right hand. Bradley's fingers will be amputated, to Bridget's reluctance. She ultimately decides she cannot hurt her buddy, and Emily punishes her by applying the already applied caustic substance to her face. Curtis manages to reach Parker, an elderly ex-soldier who lives next door. Curtis arriving with a gun raises suspicions in his mind. Plus, Parker is racist, so when he notices Curtis on his land, he locks him up for a while until Curtis is able to persuade him that there is trouble at the old house in the woods. Leaving Curtis tied up behind, he decides to investigate after recalling meeting two of the youngsters earlier the day before and witnessing them put up bear traps in the meadow. When Parker goes to look into it, he gets trapped in a trap and his legs are badly hurt. He escapes despite his wounds, and while the triplets are circling him on their ATVs, he murders two of them. Back at the house, a now completely mad Dane who has by this point shown his face to his hostages is taunting Bradley, who is still bound up in the chair. Bradley makes an attempt to apologize but fails as he collapses into a sobbing coward. Dane then severes Bradley's spinal cord with his switchblade, rendering him instantly paralyzed from the neck down. Curtis manages to free himself back at Parker's home, where he calls the police to report the incident via Parker's landline. After that, Curtis goes back to Dane's house and prevents a youngster called Riggs from having his tongue amputated. Dane, however, shoots Curtis in the arm after he succeeds in killing Andy, another outcast. Dane is ready to complete the task when Emily, who has had enough, shoots and kills him. After giving Kelly one last embrace and saying her goodbyes to Kelly, Emily gives a one last hug to Jack. Just as the cops are about to arrive, Jack then shoots Emily to death. When the cops break down the door and order Jack to drop the gun, he only points it at his own head and says that it is too late and that there are more of us out there before he shoots himself. According to a news story, the popular kids were kidnapped and tortured without reason. Kelly takes a lot of drugs in the school bathroom while staying uninjured. Curtis and the final triplet exchange looks when they are both in school. The final scene reveals that Bridget is the disfigured girl from the beginning of the movie. That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Anxiety, filling up every space, no privacy And silently, it can build and build until you finally see Whoa, it's taking over, damn, no closure, moving closer No exposure, I just wanna be a loner So can't stay sober, looking over all their shoulders